DJ LeMayhew right here. So DJ LeMayhew for the uh, the Lab Epstein Hitting Podcast. And like I mentioned earlier on the show, if I were going to create a swing pattern for the majority of youth athletes, he would be the role model. Okay, he's he's a high average, high barrel, high contact guy. And if you set these kind of foundations, then you can make little adjustments if you want to hit the ball higher and further as you get older. And 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 listen, I'm I, I love Jeff Fry and what he's you know doing with you know hey how about we just let players play and like figure things out and not have to showcase everything and and, and not you know I mean the stuff that people teach on Twitter is ri- ridiculous. Okay, so I mean. Maybe it's, it's, it doesn't mean that it's wrong, but it's really crazy and I don't even understand it and it's what I do for a living, right? And so, you know, what he's saying is, you know, just hit a ball back through the middle off a tee, you know, and like figure out your own swing and, and swing harder and swing less and work high and work low. And so if I was going to teach somebody how to, how to swing, LeMahieu would be a, a very good model for everyone. He does everything very very well and there's no extremes right he's not an extreme up guy he's not an extreme down guy he doesn't lean forward doesn't lean back too much he finds a lot of barrels and i think if we get kids to find a lot of barrels at a young age they're going to play longer and if they play longer they're going to enjoy it and if they enjoy it then they're going to practice more and they're going to get bigger and stronger and develop their swing and then that's kind of what you know, the reason I got into hitting was the enjoyment I got when somebody would smile when they would do something right. You know, a 10-year-old kid would be like, oh my gosh, that felt so good. That's it. And then I would get an email, you know, three days later, hey, Johnny got his first couple hits the other day. And you yeah, see that. You say it feels like the shackles are coming off. Right? Yeah. And it's like, that's why you do it. That's why you're a teacher. That's why I don't care if it's mathematics or chemistry or you know, when somebody has that aha moment and they produce, maybe they're not a great student and you work with this, this student on, on chemistry or biology or whatever it is, and all of a sudden they get it. And you know that it's not their strength. They're not a gifted scientist. But what you did and all the hard work you put in works for them. That's why we teach. So LeMayhew's the guy that we're going to use. So breaking this down. As I digress there, I want to want you to watch just the first few uh, clips, the first few images here as we go through. He's loading into his leg. So one of the things I tell players all the time is we have to stay stable in this right leg. Now, if you listen to, you know, all the people on the Internet, there's 4,562 big words you can say about trying to load around your back hip and your back knee and the foot and this and that and the other. Okay. The simple way is push your heel into the ground slightly. That's exactly what he's doing here. If you push your heel into the ground, the weight stabilizes into your rear glute and this foot will remain planted and your back hip will load. Okay. So don't get crazy and don't make that a huge move. This is his move. It's just, he just kind of sits into his back heel a couple inches. That's it. Then he's going to pick up his foot and he's going to stride forward. Now remember he's six, four, he's probably got a 34 inch inseam. So we have to make sure we get wide. So as he strides through here, okay, we're watching him stride forward. He's got a good weight shift. You can see how stable his back foot is. And then when he gets to toe touch, you can see his front shoulder is down, okay? The knob of the bat is facing back here behind his back foot, okay? His chest is back. His back knee starting to come in. And then when you get him to heel plant, this is his torque position, you can see his chest, his front shoulder is still down, his chest is back, but his hips are starting to open because this back knee came in. Back knee came in, front knee opened. Okay, and we're seeing this shin start to work down and in. But notice his elbows. This is why it's such a good position with players is the separation of his elbows when he goes to rotate from here to here stays the same. From there to there, those three frames. If you think about it, if you look at, you know, this angle right in here between his wrists, that doesn't change when he turns the corner, okay? That is where 95% of amateur problems happen. From heel plant to the short approach, which is right here, the arms start doing weird stuff. The barrel starts to dump and drop behind a player because they're trying to I don't know what they're trying to do. I won't use the words because maybe it works for some people. But when this elbow slots 
faster than the knob moves, then you got real problems. Okay. And if you have a player focus on that, like some players are taught, I, and again, I, I don't know exactly who this is, but I have lessons and they're like, yeah, they're trying to, I'm, they want me to throw the barrel back towards the catcher. Like that's the move. They're trying to throw the barrel back towards the catcher as fast as they can. Well, when you teach a player, now does the barrel go that way? It goes that way a little bit, but if you teach a player to do that, then what happens is they throw it by dragging this elbow underneath and then that puts yeah. them under the pitch point. So that's a real problem. So again, notice this separation, so important. When I was coaching uh, at Mizzou, when we would do hit and runs, like we, yeah, hey, we're doing hit and run rounds, uh, this this set of five swings, this is hit and runs. What's the one thing you don't want to do in hit and run? Hit the bottom of the ball, okay? So what do people think? Oh, I, I got to chop down, right? I got to swing down to kind of hit the top of the ball. No, all we want to do is don't drop the barrel, okay? So if the pitch is coming in this way, all we want to do is try to keep our barrel above that line as long as we can. So how did we do that? I would just tell players to keep your back armpit open. If you keep this open, the longer your back armpit stays open, the longer the barrel stays above your hands, okay? So the quicker this elbow goes underneath, the quicker this barrel starts to drop back here. And I don't want my players to drop their barrel back there. That's just, I don't want the barrel to reach the bottom of the arc until roughly, you know, the right before the front knee, okay? Yeah. If it bottoms out down in here, then it's gonna have to go up a ton out in front, okay? So with players, that's why, you know, the old school major league guys, I shouldn't even say old school, current major league players that are going to be Hall of Famers, what do they try to do? They set the ball out in front of home plate and they try to hit a low line drive off the back of the cage off a tee. And if you can't do that, you can't play at that level. And they're exactly right. Because you, the only way to do that is to come in flatter to be able to extend through that ball and hit it off the back of the tee. But if you drop down in here like this, and then you try to hit it off the back of the cage, it doesn't work, okay? Because if you bottom out back here, what happens? You either stay flat and miss the ball by four inches, or you correct it and come up, and that's when you, once in a while, launch balls really far. And the other 85% of the time, you just barely get under it, okay? So anyway, not really talking about LeMahieu. What I want to do is I'm going to show you the point of this pitch to the catcher's mitt, okay? When does he get on it? Okay, he gets on that plane probably here. Now, the camera is behind the hitter here, the view. So this is actually out in front a little bit more. Okay, everything's going to look more out in front. That's, I guess that's the best way to say it. So he hits his ball here, and it looks like it's 10 inches in front of his front foot. It's probably more like 3 inches in front of his front foot. Okay, but again, if we go back, here's the plane of the pitch. His meat of his barrel gets there. And then he stays on it and then watch his extension through it. That's what saves him. That right arm staying through to get him to this pitch. Because he probably was a little bit early. He probably would have rather. It's much easier to hit it, hit that pitch there in the air. Okay. Yeah. But the further out in front you go, the more your barrel's working up to your follow through. So if you don't have this good extension, it doesn't work. So what does he incorporate? Why is his swing so good? Number one, he gets low. Look at his back shin sink down into it. Okay. He has a weight shift. He steps forward. He gets the weight off of his back foot. Okay. There's no weight here. All the weight's here. Then after his body stops rotating, then the weight hits his back foot. Okay. So he has a weight. He has a load. He has a good weight shift. That's not crazy. He gets to a good torque position, meaning... When his front foot lands and his knee starts to open and his hips start to open, his chest stays back, okay? He doesn't have bad drag. When he rotates his hips, what's next? He rotates his upper body. He doesn't use his hands. There's no hand movement there. There's no wrist movement. He's simply turning his hands with his shoulders, okay? So there's no bad drag. The knob stays in front of the back elbow, okay? Then once we get here, his head doesn't move. Now his arms are gonna kick in because his body's starting to decelerate. His body's still rotating, but it's not rotating as fast, okay? It's starting to decelerate so his arms can come in. And then now he's going to use his arms once he gets his barrel in this contact zone here. Now he's gonna use his, his arms and hands to try to get that barrel to extend all the way through to his power V position. So he gets to a great power V. Well, let's go back to contact. We get him back to contact. He was a little bit out in front and messed up and hit a home run here, but that's all right. We won't give it back. 
But you can see contact here. His right palm is up. His elbow is now out in front of his body. It's not pinned here. Okay. His back shin is very low. I'm not sure it has to be any lower than that. Okay. But he's got long legs. His front leg is beginning to lock out. And then as we go into his power V position, he still hasn't rolled his wrist yet. Okay. Notice how his left wrist and left forearm is still visible and his right wrist is underneath. And then he finally rolls his right forearm over there. Okay. So one other thing that he does that's kind of funky is, you know, he gets on his front heel here at the end of his swing in his, um, in his follow through, you can see his toes lift off the ground. Okay. That move there at contact where his toes just barely lift and he's pushing back through his front heel. That's a good move because when you push back through the front heel, it means the weight's on the back of the leg, hamstrings and glutes. Okay. And it means he's really, you know, pushing back a lot. When you get this front leg on an angle like that, the toes are going to lift. So I don't recommend players trying to do that. It, I really only need to see this right there. So if we're staring at the front foot, I just want to see a little bit of toe lift right there. Just a little bit, which tells me the weight's on the right foot and they're pushing back and bracing their, themselves so they're not going to have a tendency to lunge as much. So um, again, that's about as much as the back foot. But you'll see players that get really wide like him and that angle's really sharp. They Guys that sit down and push back a lot, you'll see that front front toe come up a little bit more, but it's not, and it could be flexibility in his Achilles or his ankle, maybe he has an old injury there. It could be something like that too. So don't necessarily try to yeah. do that, you know, but if it does happen, it's okay. And then lastly, it's always good to have a Cal State Fullerton guy on the field. So you can see Phil Nevin down there coaching third. Yeah. That's the only reason I, I'm a huge Yankee fan is because there's three Fullerton guys on their coaching staff. So what does that mean? Fullerton guys with Fullerton degrees must be the smartest human beings that walk right behind LaSalle. Mm -hmm. Right behind LaSalle. No, I'm just... It was right, it was right behind Villanova. Was right <laughs> where you should have gone. Right. <laughs> anyway, right. so I'm going to go ahead and close this uh, evaluation here. You guys will be able to pick this up on uh, Epstein Hitting YouTube account.